Let the tears Celebration, bless thy glory, O Lord. You are Lord. Oh, One more time. Shua. Shua. We've been talking about the power of God. The first week I, I, I did an exposition of power in his presence. Last week we looked at activating God's presence through sacrifice. And the Holy Spirit has still laid on my heart. We are doing power again. We are looking at God's presence once again. <laughs> we are looking at God's uh, uh, power once again. And if you if you if you join heart with me and sing this song, the Holy Spirit will begin to, 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 to minister to you. Those with voices, I don't know why you are muted. Rose Bentel, are you here with us? Rose, I'm here. I don't know why people are muted. I don't know, I'm not sure. Ellen, Dr. Elena, but all those with voices, uh, Lena might be babysitting, but let's sing, let the, let the Holy Spirit minister unto us. Show us your glory. Show us. If you cannot mute, please unmute and join. Benish. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Of heaven. Of heaven. Bring us every friend. 
and show us thy Begin to pray, begin to pray. Tell the Holy Spirit to minister to you tonight. you are awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. You are awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place. Maso brade kado lobosha. I maso ma deleke de bosha. I kabado bosha pale yade. Maso pale yado. I kabala. You are welcome. In this place, you are welcome. In this place, you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus, mighty God. 
You are awesome in this place. In this place. Ah, I'm a father. Oh, you are my prayer. Father, speak to your children tonight. Speak, 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 speak to your children tonight. Our hearts are ready. Speak to us. Our souls, our minds, our bodies are prepared for you, my God. Speak to us. Let this encounter not be an encounter between mortals. Let me, this be an encounter with the supernatural, with divinity. You've done it before tonight. Saturate the atmosphere. Take control. Take control of the airwaves. Because of stability in the networks, because your word is coming, and we destroy every work of the enemy. We destroy every orchestration. And tonight, we say, take the stage. Father, take the stage. Father, take the stage. Let your healing, let your deliverance, let your salvation come. Father, come. Father, come. Father, come. And when you are done, take back all your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 The network seems to be taking people out. Those who started are not even here any longer. Yeah, those who joined from the beginning, about three network has taken them off. But God is good. All the time, he is good. Amen. Sister Mary, where is our engineer? Doc, this is in a meeting. Oh, okay. You have your meetings in the evening. That's fine. Okay, that is fine. I hope somebody brought a notebook. I said it in the announcement, bring your notebook because I want this to be a teaching encounter. I want us to go home with a certain mindset. We have looked at power in his presence and truly three weeks ago, God took over the whole stage. We looked at um, activating God's presence through sacrifice last week. And today, probably the last for the year in this series, we are looking at operating in God's power. I believe everybody here has seen or experienced God's power in one way or the other. Yeah. I believe you have been healed before. You have spoken tongues before. You have seen a miracle before. You have experienced the saving knowledge and mercy of Christ before. You have seen a breakthrough before. You have been protected. So even when we don't know, God still operates in his power. And he has given us that authority. So in Genesis 1, when he said dominion, half dominion, the dominion cannot just come. It comes with power. But because we have not followed God's word, because we have not been diligent in our dealings with him, because we have not been truthful, because we have not, we have not fulfilled our part of the covenant, we are unable to operate in that power. But tonight I'm here to feed you once again with the unadulterated word of God that from tonight, if you have not operated in that power, because of what you know, I don't know, you sit in your high places and you begin to operate in that power. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Amen. So we need somebody to read the Bible for us. Today, Sandra is not with us. I don't know. Uh, many people, when I send the messages, they did not take 
So I'm sure people are experiencing power issues or whatever, I can't tell. So whoever has the Bible, kindly um, kindly take us to Zechariah. Zechariah. And remember, we are talking about operating in the power of God. The career is somebody there. Oh, nobody can read the Bible for us. Yeah. The Korean chapter three, verses one to five. Please read a bit louder. A bit louder, please. Zachariah chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Yes. And he showed me Joshua, a high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Two. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee. O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem refuse thee. Is not this a brand black out of the fire? Three, and Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments. From him, and unto him said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of Amen. 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 Please read the last. Let them say uh -huh. five. And I read said, the four again. I'm struggling to hear you. Oh, okay. And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Five. And I said, Let them set a fair man unto his head. So they set a fair man unto his head and clothed him with garments and the angel of the Lord stood by. Amen. 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 This is one scripture that I, I, I brood over often. Because in all the dealings of Joshua, in all his days, we didn't see a record of him sinning. We have pastors here, you may correct me. From the time God said Moses should prepare and hand over to Joshua, and from the time Joshua took the mantle from Moses and Right from the beginning, God said, Joshua, be strong and courageous. God said, walk, meditate upon this word, for by this you shall prosper. God gave a lot of promises about him, and Joshua ruled the people with a, with, with a good heart till his very last day. So it's difficult. We know Moses committed some acts of disobedience and God punished him for that. We know David did that. But for Joshua, also for Zuma, I'm not sure, I don't know, but I'm not sure I've read anything that he did wrong. Can you help us here? Uh, that is recorded I, in the Bible. I think um, th th there was nothing of sight that was recorded. Yeah, thank you. So even if there was anything like that, it was not recorded. But see, after his death, this revelation came 
that he stood before the presence of God. And remember, I'm saying after his death because he became a high priest only when Moses died and he took over as a judge and the high priest. So before then, he was only a small boy unknown. So he became a high priest when he took over the mantle. And the Bible records in Zechariah that Joshua the high priest stood before God. And truly, the Bible cannot lie. He was in filthy garments. And it was Satan who was presenting him to God, the accuser, saying, look at your son, the one you have made so much noise about, the Joshua that you want other people to emulate. Look, he's in filthy clothes, meaning he's sinful. But thanks be to God, an angel of the Lord rebuked Satan. And God instructed that I am taking away your sin from you. Take away his, the filthy garments and give him a new robe. And the Bible says a crown was given unto him so that he, he looked, he, he took, he, 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 he assumed the dressing of someone in God's presence and someone in power. And so tonight, my prayer is that whatever filthy clothes that has not enabled us to operate in the power of God, may the mercy of God that fell on Joshua fall on us too. Because truth is that we cannot continue to wear our dirty garments and prepare, pre pretend and operate in God's power. We may operate in our giftings, but we will not operate in the anointing. And the gifting does not represent the power of God, but the, the, the anointing of God represents his power. We have dealt with anointing here over time. Sometimes you see it was all about the anointing. So my brothers and sisters, let's understand this, that no matter what the accuser accuses us of, as far as we are ready to part with the old garment, with the filthy clothes. So the Bible records that when any man comes to God, he is a new creation. The old things are gone. And Paul also said that since I encountered the spirit of God, I never had anything to do with flesh and blood again. So the secret here is that we can operate in the power of God throughout our lives. But the secret, the key is that we have to forego the filthy garments. You see, so if you go to Mark 10, 15, something happened there. The Bible says that when Jesus had called, has, has, has uh, caused certain miracles to happen and he crossed over the sea to the other side, then a man came rushing and this man was filled with over 72 demons. Thousands, not 70. This man was filled with many, many demons. And when he saw Jesus, he asked him, son of the living God, what have I to do with you? The Bible says that this man was living in the, in the tombs when people, when people are, had, been, had been buried. He was demonic. He was deep, demon possessed. The Bible says when they bind him with ropes, he was so strong. The demons were so strong that he would break the, uh, the, 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 the ropes asunder. He would be cutting himself with stones and blood oozing out. He was doing only what the enemy wanted him to do. The enemy was destroying him and nobody could help this man. To the point that when Jesus asked him, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion because we are very many. But Jesus cast out these demons by his power. And the Bible says that this man, this man, like blind Martinius, he threw away his old garment and he sat under the feet 
of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So what I want to tell you tonight is that normally when I'm ministering, it's not up to me to tell people their sins. We are all sinners. We live under the mercy of God. But I, as an individual, I do my best not to go back to my old ways. And so I don't know the filthy clothes that you are wearing that is not making you operate in the power that the child of God is supposed to operate in. Some of us are lying. We just cannot stop lying. Just about three days ago, God was telling me about a woman, a very good woman. And all that he was telling me is that this woman, what she hates is lying. So for you to continue the relationship that you have with this woman, who is an elderly woman, make sure under no circumstance should you lie to her. Because one lie will destroy every relationship you have built with her. For some of us, we lie because we are afraid. For some of us, we lie because we want some favors. For some of us, we still do the things that God calls us to do, yet fornication, secret relationships is killing us. There are many, I was listening to one of the preachers in Ghana recently, and he was saying that many people lost their virginity in the church, not outside the church. Many people learn how to drink alcohol in the church, not outside the church. Many people picked a lot of bad attitudes, character habits from the church, not from outside the church. But I pray that that should not be our portion. And even if we have fallen, for us to preach in the power of God, may the Holy Spirit give us that strength to flee from every act of iniquity. I can tell you, the kind of secret relationships going on in church, not just amorous relationships, people sleeping with people as if it is nobody's business. The grown-ups proposing to young ones, I was listening to Reverend Mrs. Odro recently, when she was saying that somebody who everybody knows, the whole world knows that she's a reverend, the husband is a reverend, minister, a prophet. Yet, she says, men of God, so-called, are proposing to her day and night. They are charging her, proposing to her. So most of the time, she will give her phone to her husband to be charging with this man of God. I did that recently, about three days, three, three months ago, where we had a visitor in our house, a lady who has been able to live chaste for Christ. An elderly man, a, a reverend minister, old enough to be her father, takes her number, and this man is inviting her to come and sleep over. So I take the phone and I start chatting with the man. And he didn't know it was somebody else chatting. And this man who is, has a church, a very popular church, has a family, is inviting someone younger than her own child to come and sleep over. May God have mercy on us. Amen. We are wearing dirty clothes. Our language, the things we say, the things we do in secret, the things we watch on our phones, the dirty clothes. It will never, the Holy Spirit will never dwell with certain things. Never, it won't happen. For some of us, it is addiction. And something I've been thinking of is it would be very stupid for a virgin to enter hell. 
Because even in Sodom and Gomorrah, I ever preached that message some years ago. Virgins in Sodom and Gomorrah. Even in Sodom and Gomorrah, when the angels went to destroy, with all the, 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 the kind of life they were living, Lot were able to say, I have two daughters who have never seen a man, meaning they are virgins. But you know what? We have virgins who are doing things that other people would not do. Don't be deceived by the tongues that you blow. Don't be deceived by being punctual in church every day. But take pride in the righteous garment that you are wearing. The masturbation, the addiction, the backbiting. And that's why I cannot stop preaching without talking about Psalm 1 1. Blessed is he who does not. Some of us, we don't do what we are not supposed to do, but we entertain them. So, some years ago, I was hosting somebody where I was living. And this guy comes one day and he starts talking about almost every Ghanaian around. I look at him, my heart is angry. I want to just kick him. And I ask him, since you came to live with me months, when was the first or the last time that you heard me talking about people? I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear these stories. I want to hear about what will give me progress. My brothers and sisters, Tonight, I'm here to announce to you that you can operate in the presence, in the power of God, but remove the dirty garments. Because if Joshua, with all that he did, stood before the throne and the devil was able to point a filthy garment, then you and I, where is our standing? But thanks be to the living God who said, Take that cloth and give him a new robe of righteousness. Thank that living God, the merciful God, the Abba Father, the Father of all fathers, who said, I have forgiven your sins. I have wiped away your sins. And they give him a crown. Tonight, if you hear my voice and not harden your heart, ah, if you will throw away that dirty garment, if you will not let the dirty things flying on social media steal your heart and your attention and your mind, but you feed your soul with the unadulterated word of God, you will find time meditating. You will make time studying the word of God. You will make time evangelizing to people with your word and with your life. I tell you, God is about to crown you. God is about to change your clothes. And God is about to give you a power that you are never, some power that you have never seen before. Somebody say amen. Amen. Why is it only your software's voice I'm hearing? Is everybody angry with me already? No, oh, we are here. Okay. Thank God you are for you are here. Amen. Yeah, I like it when people get angry with me. That's why when people invite me to their church, I take the mic for the first time and I tell them, you may never invite me here again, but that is your problem, not my problem. Because I don't move to pull crowns. crowds. I move to prick people to run back to God. And so sometimes when I stand to minister, and I see grown-up men and women shedding tears openly in the church, then my heart is happy because I see the Holy Spirit convicting people. And I know as I speak, the miracles we are looking for 
the signs and wonders, the breakthroughs, they are not away. When you have the power, when you possess the power, when you operate in that power, then God activates his word in Matthew 6, 33, that seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all other things shall be added. The marriage will come, the child will come, the job will come, the qualification will come, the contract will come. But you need that power. Because let me tell you, those on the other side, they have power. They are sacrificing their time for their occultic gods. They are sacrificing their money. Some are even sacrificing human beings. So when you don't have power, the power of the Holy Spirit in you, and you contend with such people for contracts, they shall win. When you contend with such people for promotion, they shall win. When you contend with such people for husbands and wives, they shall win. When you contend with such people for children, for fruit of the womb, they shall win. Because they are sacrificing everything that we have. Some sacrifice their mothers, their fathers. Some sacrifice their children. Some sacrifice everything that is important to them. So they have power, but that power is from the devil. When we operate in the power of the living God, their power becomes useless. Hello. Hi. But until we possess that power, until we operate fully, we function fully in the power of the living God, the slaves, sinners, will continue to enjoy the fruits of the land while the kings and the royals walk and beg them. But tonight I pray that may not be your portion any longer. Mm. Because if you didn't know, the word of God is coming. Leave the addiction behind. When Jesus called the man, before he healed him, before the man, before he, he went to Jesus, the Bible says that he, he threw away his old garments. They were filthy. He had been blind in that those garments for over 30 years. And if he needs his healing, why should he go with those garments again? Tonight, if you need God to do a miracle in your life, if you need God to give you that power, that anointing, that unction, leave that thought, evil thought. Leave that addiction. Leave that guilt you are living in. Forgive as if this is your last day, no matter what people have done to you. Do what the Bible tells you. And you preach in that power. To preach in that power. In John 3.30, I've used this scripture the entire three weeks. Uh, Ms. Amponsa, read John 3.30 for us. Seufa. <laughs> Now, na
You see, there's someone here on Zoom, not on Facebook. We are operating on both Facebook and Zoom. So let me be very specific. There's someone here and there is a fetish spirit in your family. Kadaya masu kataya masandi. Eradi beshe wo ejo nyame beshe. Amanesi you. There's somebody here. Your family they worship fetish, and you were supposed to be a fetish, but you have stood. But the powers have still fought you. But tonight. Tonight, as I eradicate the woe, I join your membership. Mister Zuma, I'm talking about you. Tonight, I see that God has taken that thing that the 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 the, the fetish priests in Ghana they use they use when they are doing their things. What do you call it? Uh, the tail of uh, an animal. What do you call that thing? The budia. Yes, yes, yes. I see it has been taken from your hand. And the God says he has dealt with those forces. <laughs> they have stood against you. But God says tonight is the night. His power is at work. Amen. I don't know if what I'm saying, you have anything to say about it. But I'm telling you what the Holy Spirit is telling me. That your people worship these gods. And you... I, all the time I've known you for years, I know you have been a stand Christian, but tonight the Holy Spirit is telling me you were supposed to hold that thing. I don't know the word you have for us. I think uh, it's, 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 it's very true. Because if I want to start the story, it's a very long story. Number one, I was, I, they gave birth to me. I had a, as a bridge birth. Mm. And with a bridge bed, I instead of coming with my legs, I came with my head. Mm. So there have been special <laughs> sacrifices from the from my childhood, and the battle has been very, very tough. Yeah, it has, it has yeah. never been easy. Do you have a Bible with you? My Bible is, is just here. Just lift it up and stand where you are. And Father, because you are spoken tonight. I stand not in my name because I have no power, but all power belongs to you. Because you have said it, we are declaring tonight in faith that what you have said is already settled in heaven. Amen. The forces that has rose against that are, that have fought against him, the forces from the graves, the forces from the rocks, the forces from the mountains, the forces from the sea. With fire of heaven, I destroy you. And tonight, Lord, you say the breakthrough is complete. And Amen. so is it established in my brother's Amen. life. Amen. He set on fire every sacrifice that has been made against you. And we Amen. set on fire every altar that has been set against you and your children. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And God says, is clothing your children Amen. with the robes of priests. For tonight, he has ended that battle because Amen. your children were supposed to suffer from that. But tonight, I speak as a servant of the living God and I speak what the Holy Spirit says, that I see your children, your firstborn. I see a hand on him and I see him in a white piece of clothing. And God Amen. says, so shall it be. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now when you just was sad, I thank 
You know what? The word that came was specifically for Osofwe Zuma, but the Holy Spirit is saying that three other people with similar sp spirits in your in your family. There's the fetish spirit is in your family. Yes, you were not supposed to be the one to be the whatever, like also for Zuma. But I pray tonight, joining faith with everybody here. Hmm. For one person, even your grandfather was a fetish priest. One person here. So close. For the others, you may not even know, but it is there. But we pray tonight and we bring down the stronghold of the enemy. He cancel your names from any such families. Wherever the family list is, that yours, your name is included. We set fire in such lists. Wherever things have been buried, we release for your glory shall not continue to be buried. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We release these three people and we cause your glory to be upon their lives now and forevermore. Amen. And even their generations in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Ah, ah, ah. Um, so how do you, I think the Holy Spirit just wanted us to see how we operate in the in the in God's presence because this this just happened. <laughs> I mean uh -huh. we have a hey. teaching to do tonight. Hey, also, let me say this. Yes. I think it was is it on Monday or Tuesday? I can't remember, but it's this week. Yeah. I had a very bad dream. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next morning and Mostly, uh, I've been praying with also for Isaac. Yeah. I just called him. I said, "Hey, this is the kind of uh, dream I had." Immediately, I, I I spoke to him. He said, "Hey, we need to pray about it. They are still forcing that they want to initiate you." Ah, okay. And and, <laughs> and this thing has also come. Yeah. It's a confirmation of the the voice of the Lord. Yeah. God God has done it. Don't worry. Not even your Amen. children. No, not even your children. God has done it. Amen. Thank you. Thank God. Ah. So, how do we operate in the power of God? For those of you who have been here with us over time, we've been doing this for one and a half years. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I feel some heat around me. Oh, Lord, may you impact over everybody that is under the sound of my voice now. Uh, may these waves of your holy waves, may your holy, <laughs> may your holy presence be activated wherever they are. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. You see, we have seen the demonstration of the Holy Spirit not once over here. And the truth is, is Samuel amongst the prophets? No, I'm not a prophet. Has Samuel been ordained by anybody? No, I've not been ordained by any human being. I've not been to any Bible school. But the secrets, the secrets that make God have mercy on me now to give me occasional word of wisdom or occasional word of knowledge, or occasional discernment. We have seen instant healing on this platform before. We have seen not once, we have seen impartation before. You see, the secret is what I'm sharing from my heart. So that when you practice it, 
You don't need to wear a collar. We, we, we adore those people in colors. They are there for us. They are interceding on our behalf. But when they are not there as children of God who have been called into the royal priesthood, how do we also function? That's why I say some of these things with passion. So in John 3, 330, the writer says, let me, somebody read that for us, please. John 330, John 330, quickly. Who is reading? I must be. Miss Ambosa, is your phone far away? No. I'm struggling to hear you. I don't know if it's only me. Hello. Yes. Go ahead, please. Increase the volume and go ahead, please. John 3.30. Yes. He must increase. But I must decrease. Amen. Amen. So to operate in the presence of God always. You see, it's sad. I've said this before. There are men and women of God. When they started, even one shoe, one shirt, where to lay their heads was a problem. Now God's mercies came upon them. They don't lack. Now, instead of showcasing God, they are showcasing their material world. They are showcasing their cars. It's not bad. Don't get me wrong. We need the best of cars to ride in. We need the best of houses to live in. We need the best of clothes to wear. It's not bad. But in as much as God raises you, what you do is to humble yourself and raise his flag higher. I remember one, one, one reverend minister, I mean, a um, big reverend minister, very humble. And he said once he sat on an airplane from Europe to Ghana and the six hours, he sat with another man of God he knew when they all started. And for six hours, all that the man of God was telling him about what, I, what he has done, what he, he possesses. And I have done this, and I have this, and I have done this. And he said, Samuel, I, I, I felt like a failure when the man went on, went on. But you see, the Bible says he must increase while I decrease. If you want to operate in the presence of God, let me share this story. In 2015, when I sat in a bus in South Africa, it was just two weeks to my graduation. And this lady, I think she had seen that I was a foreigner. So she wouldn't even push for me to sit down. I was getting angry. I think the, the devil was speaking to my heart that time. But some way, somehow, I heard God's voice in my anger. And God said, my son, keep your calm. I gave you a doctorate degree so that other people will learn humility from you. That was another turning point in my life. I gave you a doctorate degree so that other people will learn humility from you. So even with 10 PhDs, let God be magnified and let me leave as if I've never been to school. I was telling my friend, the one I'm, 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 I'm in this apartment with not long ago, that I, it becomes sad when we take to social media and we mock people who cannot speak English. And it has become so bad that a teacher, a professional teacher who is being paid to teach a child will take a form 
and record a child who is incapable of speaking English or doing some work in the classroom and share it to the whole world. That is the highest point of pride. My brothers and sisters, let him arise and let me be as little as I can. And by so doing, we will continue to operate in the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. Under no circumstance should pride be a part of us. God detests the pride. To pray in his power, humility is key. You know, there's something I tell people that people really don't know. But the Bible says, Moses was the greatest prophet of all. The greatest prophet. But he didn't even, we had never even addressed him as a prophet. And yet the Bible says he was the most humble person to ever occupy the surface of the earth. We can operate in the power of the living God, but our humility, our humility, our humility. Years ago, when I didn't even know Christ, when I was very young, I sat down and I said that for people who are humble, even if they don't know Christ and they don't have anything to protect them, if you want to use witchcraft against them, you suffer because of their humility. You set traps for them. It does not work. And therefore, when you know God and you have him at your back, and you are humble, you go far, and you don't stay away from his power. Hallelujah. Amen. Juanita. Juanita. Uh, Mr. Bonsa, let's go to let's John 2, 6. I hope people are writing. I want this to be a teaching service. The Holy Spirit took over but that's why I told people to come record. Uh, Juanita. Okay. Ms. Amboza, 1 John, uh, John 2.6. John 2.6. John 2.6. He that said he abided in him. Ms. Amboza, why is your voice so far? Uh, it's right now, so I don't know whether it's that one. Hello. Yes, hello. First John. Please can you hear me? Yes. Yes. He that said he abided in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walk. Please can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Right. So, the Bible is urging us, the writer is urging us that those who profess to know Christ should also walk in the light of Christ. Other versions says we should walk as Jesus walked. And how did Jesus walk? I've just finished talking about humility. He says, I am humble. So emulate me and be humble. He was forgiven. Unforgiveness. <clears throat> Two of the most serious things that hinder our blessings and our healing are unforgiveness and disobedience. Jesus was forgiven, even on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's very difficult. But I think I've tried on some occasions 
where I will tell some of my friends what somebody has done or somebody has told me in my face. And they will ask me, and you sat there looking at the person. I said, what can I do? I can't fight. And I, 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 I am not even allowed to fight my own battles because God once told me when I was angry that if I don't leave the fight to him, he will leave me to fight my own fight. So we go through, people do to us as Christians, they will come to you, call you brother, sister, they will call you a sophomore, knowing that you cannot do what people, other people will do to them, people of their own kind. They will do to you. Somebody insulted me on Facebook about two years ago for passing a joke. He just insulted me, went on and on and on. When I read everything he had done, he, has, he had written. And even, you know, somebody shared a joke. We were all sharing jokes, and this guy just. So after he had written all that he writes, I just wrote, you know, I can never use the words you have used against me. That's why you did this, but it will never happen again. We cannot fight fire with fire. Jesus walked in humility. He walked in forgiveness. He walked in kindness. He walked in selflessness. He walked in simplicity. Brothers and sisters, Christianity for me is simplicity. Jesus walked in that simplicity. Why can't we emulate him? He says, come to me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He says, take my yoke for my yoke is light. We can operate in his power when we live like he lived. Let us move on. Let us move to Luke chapter 2, verses 36 to 37. And see, the Bible talks about the prophetess Anna. Madam, are you there? Luke. Chapter 2, verses 36 and 37. Luke 2. 36 to 37. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Hanno, of the tribe of Azar. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four square and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. Amen. Amen. So this is how we operate in the presence of the living God. This is how we operate in the power of God, sorry. Anna was 84 years. She married very young. And I told you, I've told you time without number. When in the Bible, somebody's name is mentioned, the father, uh, where he's, he or she comes from, that means the person is from a very prominent family. So Anna, the prophetess, the father's name is mentioned, their clan is mentioned, so she was worthy. She married very early. After seven years, the husband died. She was 84 years as at the time the writer was writing. And the Bible says that she ministered in the temple. She never departed from the temple. And she went to God with fastings and prayers day and night. Of course, you ask me, how can I stay in the temple all the days of my life. Remember, we are in the New Testament dispensation, and now the temple is not what you see out there. You are the temple of the living God. So even as Anna prayed day and night, prayed day and night, 
meditate. Sometimes I get to very noisy places. I don't like the music, but I have to be there. So I tune my heart and in my head, I am praying, I am meditating. The Holy Spirit is so amazing. Sometimes that song is being, sung, is being played out there, but a worship will be going on within my heart. The Holy Spirit just takes my whole spirit from that environment. We can do that. When you are sitting in the bus, meditate. When you are walking, I once drove from Accra to Achimswe drove about two years ago for a funeral on a Saturday morning. I went alone. All the time I was driving, I was blowing tongues till I got to the funeral place. For almost three hours, I was driving through traffic, through the rough road. I was blowing tongues till I got to the place. Let's practice these things. It puts you in the presence of the living God. Anna, I don't think, was a very happy woman if it was not the spirit of God with her. The Bible says she married a, as a virgin. So she was not one of those who lived like we live some time back. She kept herself for Christ. Yet seven years, the husband is gone. Yet she knew nobody except Christ. It's a habit we can cultivate. I remember pa, one day I was sitting in the car, taxi. And out of nowhere, a minibus with speed. It was red light, so we were parked. We are stopped, not parked, we are stopped. All we heard, and I was in the back seat. All we heard was the crash, the sound. And out of nowhere, all that I heard myself saying was, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because I have trained myself to be thankful in all circumstances. So I was not thanking God because I was alive. At that moment, I didn't even know what, what had happened. But I had trained myself to be thankful to God. So it just came out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We can dwell in the presence of God every time that we live. And when we do that, we operate in his power. The Bible says, Anna, don't wait for your church to announce a fasting. Don't wait for your church to announce a prayer fast, uh, session. Know when to fast unto God. Know when to pray. Somebody's song says, never cease praying. Let your prayer be like a telephone call. Enjoy operating in his power. In sorrow, operate in his power. And in all circumstances, in help. So Paul said in Romans, what shall separate us from the love of God? Is it death or tribulation, poverty, shipwrecking, whatever? Nothing shall separate us from God. Remember, in all things, we are more than conquerors. The devil will do his worst. Just like Osof Ozuma was saying, the devil will do his worst, but we are children of light. And as long as we align our ways with the living God. Ah! Adi asi bone be ya 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 ya
and the gift, Ube, 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 him white handkerchiefs and he pantias here. Ube, him white handkerchief and he pantias here. And so, in Kunim, if we rather or never. Mr. Gifty, what's up now, Mechanizano? Let's finish this session. Efficient 17. Next time, we'll run them. We're starting to Ms. Remo. So we finish on time. It's, it's almost 12 here. Efficient 5, 17 to 21. Let's end with that scripture. Efficient 5, 17 to 21. Are you reading? Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. That is how to be operate in the power of God. Do not be unwise. The Bible says that we should know the times. We should know the times. We live in perilous times. If you are not careful, you fall. The Bible says that the time is coming where even the elect, very elect will fall. And we have seen many elect fallen. We have seen people who have done God's work for years. And now they can sit on air and tell you there is nothing like heaven and hell. Some are saying Jesus is not coming anywhere. Some are saying that they are even Jesus. But these people started very well. And if you are not careful, you will still follow them. But the Bible says that we should be wise and know what does not please God. Go on, sister. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled Speaking with the Spirit. Yourself in... mm -hmm. Go on. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Mm. singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Hold on. So the Even Bible says what? Mm -hmm. Hold on, please. We should not be filled with uh, wine. If we want to be operate in the operate in the power of God, we are not supposed to be filled with wine. Rather, we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when we meet amongst ourselves, we should encourage each, each other with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. With praise, with worship, with prayer songs, with the word of God, not gossip, not filthy language, not ideas that do not please God. Let us encourage each other with psalms, with hymns, with spiritual songs. Please finish. Giving thanks always for the things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourself one to another. That's okay. Amen. 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 So brothers and sisters, we can operate in the power of God. I've said a lot of things. But in ending, let's know what pleases God and what does not please him. In ending, let us be filled with the Holy Spirit. In ending, when we meet, let our conversations be without any profanity. Let our converse, conversations be, be wholesome. Let us encourage each other with psalms, with hymns, with songs of prayer. In other words, with worship, with praise, 
with prayer songs. And above all, let us give thanks unto God in all circumstances. So that when he releases, which he is releasing now, his power, it shall not escape us. And we will operate in the full, in the power of the living God. In Jesus' name. May his name be blessed and may you be blessed. Amen. 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 You are welcome in this place, Holy Father. You are welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of our praise. Mm -hmm. To you, our lives we raise. You mm -hmm. are awesome in this place, mm -hmm. mighty God. Mm -hmm. You are awesome in this Shut place, mm -hmm. mighty God. You are awesome in this place, our Father. Oh, you are worthy of our praise. To you, our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome. Awesome in this place, mighty God. Shada da 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 masika ta ya masuka ta. You are awesome in this place. You don't have a song number. Do you do our lives we raise? You are awesome in this place. Mighty God. I want everybody to start praying and thanking God for his word. His word is always a revelation. I want you to open your heart and start thanking him for his word. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word that has come to us. Even as we listen to your word, Lord Jesus, may you not be hearers of the word, may you be doers of the word as well. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, please sustain the word. Make us pray divine. Jesus, we do for us always. In the name of Jesus. Lord. Take your honor, take your honor, take your honor, take your praise, take your anointing, take your praise, take your praise, take your glory. Father, we thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we don't start early. We, 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 we cannot pray for long, but this is what I hear. We are praying against the demon, the power of uh, addiction. 
we have people here who are still addicted to certain things. You know your addiction, cry unto the Lord. You can't carry those addictions. The man God called, Jesus called, threw away his filthy robes. God has power to break any form of addiction, but make up your mind that you are parting with it. Begin to pray. You know your addiction. Begin to pray. Father, we come to you. Father, we come to you. Admit your, bring your children before you. Father, every form of addiction, every form, lies, adultery, fornication, Father, any form of addiction, addiction, masturbation, whatever it is, I bring before you. Father, anger, whatever it is, I bring before you, Lord, that you have mercy on your children, that your power will part every sex attack, every sex demonic oppression from their lives. Father, he can be a drink. Everyone under the sound of my voice before you, every power of oppression, every demon of addiction, my Lord. We don't mind how long it has been. We don't mind where it was planted and how it was planted. All that we know is that you have power to break. When you call the man, he said, our name is a legend because we are very many, but by your word, we are very many, but by your word, you, 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 your, and your mercies. You, you delivered him. Father, when Mary Magdalene came to you with so much, many demons and adultery and all the sins, uh, you had mercy on him and you delivered him. Father, tonight, any form of addiction, we come against it. Your children are ready. Your children are ready to operate in your power. And so we pray tonight, breaking every form of addiction, breaking every power of addiction, breaking every oppressive spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Me wo fa u dio. Hallelujah. Me wo fa u dio. Me wo fa I don't normally do warfare, but a voice has come. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The voice has come. I don't normally do, I don't have time for warfare. I have time for praise. There are some people who have taken contracts against some of us that never will we move forward that never will we see success, that never will we see our breakthroughs. Even healing, I hear healing, healing, we shall never see healing. We shall die in our situation. But oh, Guama, oh, dear, 
Somebody in chains, but God is with us. We are going to break it now. I see somebody who is tied in chains. I can't mention names openly here. Oh, Guava. You know what? These people are doing what they are doing because they have been contracted by spirit. Spirit can't operate without a living body. So they are being manipulated by this body. So we are praying against any spirit that is working with these people. If you pray against the people, you are doing nothing. They will die and the spirit will still occupy another body. So we are praying against these spirits. Father, we come before you. Jesus. You have revealed one sakato ya masi kata. Shandi ya masundi ya kata ya masakata. Father, any power, any power, any principality, any demonic attack, any oppressive spirit from the seas, from the from, 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 from the mountains, from the trees, Father, from the skies, wherever they are, God has contracted people, manipulating to work against us. Tonight, we come together in your power, in your presence, and we speak your deliverance. That nobody under the sound of my voice will continue to suffer oppression. But any such spirit, we send them back to the Hades. Any such spirit, we throw them back to the peace of hell. Any such spirit, any such demons, we strike them with the tender of heaven. Any such powers, we come against them with the power of the living God. Father, anyone who has allowed himself or herself to be manipulated, we pray that you deal with them according to the measure that they rose against us, that you deal with them according to what they have purpose, that every pit that they have dug for us, they have fallen in it, that every contract that they have signed because of us uh, is going against them, for their own words will fall on their bosoms, for their own plans will fall against them, for if they come against us united, they shall go back confused and hurt, they shall go back frustrated, be frustrated every agenda of Ahitophel. We frustrate every council of Ahitophel. We come against any prince of Persia. We come against any spirit of Jezebel. We come against any power, any demon. Father, tonight we call upon your name, Jesus. Arise and let your enemies be scattered. In our place, we scatter every demonic one, everyone possessed. In our, at our workplace, we come against everybody who is against us. Uh, in our churches, we come against us. Uh, anybody who is being used against us, uh, be those in higher power or lower power, be our peers uh, and our workplace in our families where we live, we come against them. We cast them down. We block the handwriting of the enemy. We reverse and free curse in the name of Jesus. Uh, and Father, any daughter of Zion here who is tied with chains, I cause your deliverance to take place now. I cause your deliverance to take place now. Deliver her. Let there be a physical manifestation. Turn things around for her. My God, I come against every break asunder, every chain, not in my name, but in the name of Jesus. This chain that was put on her at the age of three, now we come in the name of Jesus and we 
break it. We destroy it. It shall not work again. We set it on fire. It shall not work again. Lord, arise. Lord, arise. Lord, arise. Kadu yamasi kato yamasi katete. Shindiri yamasundi akatata. Shande yamasi kata yamasakata. Daughter, you are set free. Your Holy Spirit. Let's all pray for a sister who could not join us tonight. Uh, she's far away in in UAE, and uh, they are going through tough times. She has never been with us, but she's my friend on Facebook, and uh, she wanted to join, but she says. The daughter is not asleep and will not allow her to hold her phone. But I promise we'll pray for her. I cannot give the details here. Her name is Sister Cherry Rose. Cherry Rose. So I want us to open our hearts and pray for her. Cherry Rose and her three very young children. Let us pray for them. Let us pray for the Holy Spirit the name of Jesus. to, 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 to Spirit be, be with them, picture, and the man, Jesus. to be their Spirit provider, the the to be their picture, strength. The Father, we lift our hands as a sign of humility and registering in heavens, bringing Sister Cherry Rose. You know how she loves you. She know how her faith is in you alone. Whatever they are going through tonight, this moment, whatever has befallen them, my God, we pray that you, in your own mercy, will visit them, will be their strength, will be their joy, will be their father, will be their husband, will be their provider, Jehovah El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh. I pray that your banner over her life and her children will never be brought down. I pray that your peace will never depart from them. I pray that your joy will be their portion. Your victory is assured. Your protection is for them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We are sharing the last prayer. I hear that BC is starting in Ghana tomorrow. That our, our children in junior high school are going to write. Let us commit them into the hands of God. That this year will be an extraordinary year. Father, we commit our children into your hands. We commit their schools, we commit their teachers. We pray for your presence. We pray for retentive memory. We pray for comprehension. We pray for discernment. We pray for health. We pray for peace in this time. That throughout this season and beyond, we shall not hear of any casualty. We shall not hear of any disaster. We shall not hear of any confusion. But you do what has never been done before. That even the weakest will come out of flying colors. We bring anti Cynthia and in fact, her school. Royal Avenue, that God, this year will be another Amen. exceptional year. We pray for all other schools where Jesus. our children are, where our families are, where we are working, Sister Gifty, and all other people are in South Africa or Sofo, or Sofo Zuma. They are also writing. We commit them into your hands, my God. Wherever your children's feet are trodden, let there be excellence Amen. and in the end we we'll give you glory in jesus mighty name amen let us take the benediction may the god whose name is i am may the one who was who is and is to come may the one whose presence and power go glory for me is above every power be with you May he give you a special encounter tonight, uh, uh, this week. May he bless you beyond measure. May he protect your going out and your coming in. May he bless everything that concerns you 
Let me mm-hmm. give you grace and mm-hmm. power beyond what you have asked for now and forevermore. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you so, so, so much.